Welcome to Ginger Spice's Beginner's Guide to Sentient Weapons. In this video, I'm going to be going over the basics of how sentient weapons work uh, mechanically, offering you a few tips. Uh, this is going to be for people who are brand new or still learning sentient weapons. If you're already up and running with sentient weapons, uh, this video is not really going to contain anything for you. But Ravenloft just went on sale in the DDO store, and I know there's a lot of people that just picked this up and who are just now getting into sentient weapons. And I know there's some of you watching who still haven't gotten Ravenloft and are wondering what the heck these things are and how they work. So I'm going to try to break that down for you. But the gist of sentient weapons, are ba it's basically just a system to make your existing weapons better. So if you're an old pen and paper D&D guy like I am, then you think of sentient weapons as like its its own weapon in itself. But in DDO, it's you basically you just get this jewel, this sentient jewel, and then you add that to an existing named weapon that's level 20 and higher. I'll get more into the details in a bit. So where do we start? Well, after you finish the introductory quest to Ravenloft into the mist, you, uh, as soon as you get into the, the wilderness, you're going to run into this guy right away, Tobar the Smith, in his little wagon here, and you're going to talk to him, and he's going to give you a weapon and a sentient jewel. This is not my main uh, tune, by the way. This is just a test tune that I made on La Mania. I'll be doing most of this video on La Mania. Uh, so the first thing he's going to do is give you a weapon. And don't make the mistake of thinking that this is your sentient weapon. This list right here has nothing to do with sentient weapons. He's just giving you a free weapon as like, hey, welcome to Barovia. Have a weapon. You know, they're kind of neat. So you can take a look at them. And, uh, you know, if you see something you like, that's great. But this is not, I mean, you can make this sentient. You can make these weapons sentient. But don't think, like, this is the weapon you have to make sentient. Like I said, you can basically make any named level 20 and up weapon sentient with some limitations. So I'm just going to grab a dagger here and then talk to him again. And he's going to offer you a sentient jewel. And so you get a choice of these three here. Hopeful, inquisitive, and resolute. What's the difference? Well, it's just personality. There's no f functional difference between them. It's just different personalities. So sentient weapons, like you're totally you have no idea what the heck that is. It's like a weapon that is like alive and talks to you and says funny things. And and, and back in pen and paper, you know, they could really be like as intricate. And as role played as is the, the dungeon master wanted them to be, but here in DDO, uh, it's just you know they say kind of funny things along the way while you're adventuring. Maybe when you open a chest or kill a monster or your party member dies or you know different different things that happen, they just talk and it's just it's like it's just it's just funny. But they do add a lot more functionality to your weapon. And if you don't like the voice, you know the, you can go into your UI and you can you can turn that off. You can turn it down just by going to, let's see here, oh, main menu, options, audio, and I'm not sure if there's a checkbox somewhere, but here you go, sentient weapon volume, you can just turn that all the way down if you don't like. Some people find them irritating. Oh, I lost my box. But like the hopeful gem is like this perky uh, female voice that's like, oh great, we're going on an adventure. <laughs> And then uh, the Resolute is more of like a stocky Amazonian woman's voice or something. Uh, and I haven't used the Inquisitive one, but, uh, you know, when you make your choice here, you're going to be able to get, you know, you're, you're, this isn't going to be like the only one you get forever and ever. Like, you, you can get the other ones now, uh, later on. So don't, don't stress about picking the wrong one. Uh, just... You know, if you don't know the different personalities, then just, you know, pick one that, you, that sounds that sounds interesting. I like the hopeful one. I, th I think it's funny. I'm just going to grab that one. Uh, notice that it is bound to a count, so you can grab it on a tune and move it to another tune or something. Like, if you wanted to have, you know, two sentient jewels on another tune right away or something, you can do that. You know, you could... Um, 
Well, you can't really just make a new tune and run this. You do have to run that intro quest on Legendary, so you'd have to be at least t level 20 to come out here and, and do this uh, intro quest and get the Sentient Jewel. If you run it on Heroic, then you're not going to have an option to get that Jewel. Okay, I'm going to run to the tavern real quick because there's something I want to show you there about getting more jewels. Alright, I jumped on an alt because I wanted to show you here in the Blood on the Vine Tavern that when you complete your Ravenloft saga, you're going to have uh, more sentient jewels to choose from. There should be these four on the list. I believe every time these are going to show up. And you can see three of them are the same as the ones that you had from the intro quest. And then you have a new one to choose from, Furious. And remember, they're just all different personalities. They're all, Functionally, they're all going to be the same. They're all going to allow you to do the same kinds of things. So that's another way to get sentient uh, jewels from. And you can run that saga over and over and over to get more sentient jewels if you like. Okay, now I'm going to jump over to Voodoo. Alright, now I'm on Voodoo in Lamania, and wanted to show you that at the Blue Water Tavern, you can talk to this epic treasure person, and there is another sentient jewel available uh, with 80 Vistani totems. And this Jewel of the Timid, from what I've heard, is actually Cordovan's voice. So I haven't heard it, but... You know, I've just read about it on the forums, but this is another way to get a sentient jewel. And you you get these Vistani totems basically from any, I think any legendary quest in Ravenloft can drop those totems, whether it's in the Slayer Zone or in the quest. So 80 is kind of a lot, but, you know, you can farm those out. Just wanted to show you that's another way you can get a sentient jewel. And the Curse of the Strahd Raid also has another sentient jewel available there, and that is the covetous jewel and then the 12th anniversary party just ended there was a kobold sentient jewel that was available from that event but that event is over now but here uh, is one just to show you uh, this was the first sentient jewel that was available outside of Ravenloft so until that 12th anniversary party the only sentient jewels in fact even I guess now that the party is over the only place to get sentient jewels from is inside of Ravenloft they have talked about plans for doing future sentient jewels. I believe they want to do like a dragon voiced one. But who knows when, if, or where that will be available. So that's where you can get your sentient jewels. So let's show you how these work. Now, like I said, your sentient. Uh, weapons or your sentient jewels is just a way to make an existing weapon better. So you got a weapon you love, a named weapon you love, this lets you make it even better. But you can't, you can use it on most level 20 and up weapons, but it can't be like crafted weapons like Thunder Forge or Legendary Green Steel, for example. If your weapon will accept sentience, it will say so right at the top. So here you can see in the Celestia at the top it says accept sentience. This uh, and Venom Blade, though, is only a level 16 weapon, so that does not accept sentience. Even old school epic items where you had to collect the shard and the seal and the scroll, like this epic Sirocco, you can see that accepts sentience. So you could, for example, make like your epic Sword of Shadows sentient, which would be really freaking cool. Okay, so let's so let's show you how it works. So the way that you add, so you're adding your sentient gem to your weapon. And you may have noticed this little box here was added after Ravenloft was added in your inventory sheet. And you just drag the weapon over, any weapon that says it accepts sentience, and then this little box comes up. And you just take your jewel, and you pop it over there. <laughs> and you can hear a little voice when it when it goes in there. I don't. That was really low, though. So. Uh, I'm going to turn the volume up so you can hear some of it. Sentient weapon volume. Okay, hopefully that's not too loud. Okay, so so now my epic Sirocco is sentient, and this little box appears, and this is the box in which you put your 
filigrees and your filigrees are basically they're like augments it's like a it's like an augment system just for sentient weapons and I'm going to show you some of those in a minute but you can level up your sentient weapon by feeding it named items and the more named items you feed it the more XP it gets you can see down here it says sentient XP 0 XP for the next slot 2000 and basically any named item so this is a great way to get rid of named items that you don't want you don't have to vendor trash named items you know anymore you know you just feed them to your sentient weapon and you do that just by grabbing it um, and dragging it over here to this box mm, feed me more <laughs> so you get a little taste of what of what the cobalt gem sounds like and uh, let's see so the amount of experience that it gives is determined by the the minimum level of the item. So, like Kundrak Delving Boots here, that are just a level nine item, you'll see that it only gives nine XP. That's pretty sucky. But the higher the level of the item, the more it gives. So, anything I think it's 20 and under just gives whatever the minimum level is. So, 20 and under under named items would give like you know one XP per level. So, pretty crappy. But once you get up to above that, it starts giving more. And okay, so 21 to 27 the minimum level the item will give you the minimum level times 5 and then if it's a level 28 or up item it will give you the minimum level of the item times 10 so your biggest sentient XP is going to be gained from feeding it high level items so let's see here we get these legendary gauntlets of any arcana level 29 boom so that should have given me 290 uh, sentient XP. What else we got over here? Uh, so you can also feed. So what else can you feed besides like, you know, random named items that you find? You know, I know you're gonna want to level this thing up quickly. So what are some good sources of that? Well, you can even feed it things like uh, legendary green steel blanks. That was actually a crafted item, but just for showing you, for example, um, remember I'm on Lamania, so I didn't really feed it my. <laughs> my actual legendary green steel you know this is just a copied version of my tune over here on the test server uh, so but I wouldn't advise that you do legendary green steel blanks because that's going to chew up all your codex runes and you don't really want to do that but I'm just showing you that you can feed it legendary green steel blanks you can also feed it thunderforge blanks so if you have a ton of mats to you know create you know a bunch of thunderforge blanks a bunch of mats you don't need then that can be a good way to uh, use some of them up and get some sentient uh, weapon XP and you can also uh, oh that's that's green steel uh, what else so you can also like let's see if you have some extra of the restored giant hold relics you know that you use to buy like the the elf crafted armors and stuff like that the, and I'm talking about the epic ones you could feed the, the heroic ones but the epic ones you know are like level 24 or something so that's going to be higher XP so if you have a bunch of those restored relics you can go to giant hold buy a bunch of those armors and feed those to your sentient weapons or if you have a bunch of the uh, challenge ingredients from like evening star challenges you can go to like the level 24 trader there and get those Cormirian weapons and things that you can get from from that trader guy and you can feed those to your sentient weapons so those are some some farms that you can do uh, you know if you're looking to level it up quickly otherwise it's just going to be you know when you find named items that you don't want you feed them to your sentient weapon and so let's just feed some here to get it to the next level so I need 2,000 so let's, boom Oops, ah, that's why I had this here. So I wanted to show you that you cannot feed a named item if it has an augment in it. And I believe the reason for that is because an augment can change the level of the item. And I guess it, you know, if you had like a level one named item and you put a high level augment in it, then it was treating it like a, you know, a high level item and giving you lots of XP. But so I guess they just, that's why they made it so that at least right now you can't feed an item if it has an augment in it. Do I have enough stuff here to feed? This is just a bunch of junk I got from from the test dojo on Lamania. Well, this is like low level stuff. They're not giving me very much XP. So basically any named items 
you know, you can't. They, there are some limitations, and I'm not going to go over what all those limitations are. <laughs> so there, I just leveled up to uh, the second uh, tier, and it opened up another filigree slot. And now it says it takes 6,000 total XP for the next slot, for the third slot. And there's up to seven slots available. And that is 60,000 sentient XP to get all the way up to seven. And they said they might add more slots later. Just saying, I just so you're aware, who knows if they actually will, but they said that is a possibility. So we just feed all your un unwanted name stuff to your sentient weapon. Don't go crazy. Don't feed stuff that you're going to regret later. It's not a race. But, <laughs> all right, so... But, uh, okay, let's do filigrees. So here are some examples of some filigrees. And like I said, these are basically like an augment system just for sentient weapons. And they all have different abilities, a whole bunch of them. You know, you want to go on the wiki and, and look at all the different sets. They, you know, each filigree has an ability. And then if you have multiple filigrees from the same set, then you can get set bonuses. So for example, like this electrocution MRR one, uh, it says if you have two pieces, so two of these, uh, that means two filigrees from this electrocution set into your sentient weapon, and that would give you that two piece set bonus, uh, plus 50 electric spell power, for example, here. Or let's see, what's this one? Grandfather's shield. So constitution, this one is, you know, it says their senti sentient filigree slot into a sentient item gives plus one constitution. As far as I know, that's an unnamed bonus. Uh, I don't think that has a type to that bonus uh, in any event. So slotting that filigree over here gives me plus one constitution. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when the weapon is equipped, of course. And then if I had a second filigree from that grandfather's shield set, so I'll go ahead and pop this one in there. You're amazing! <laughs> <Finally>. And uh, <laughs> you can see the two-piece set bonus is plus five uh, PRR. And so I have plus one constitution from that one, and I have plus four armor class from that one, and then because I have two pieces from the same set, it's giving me plus five PRR. And now all the different filigree sets have different set bonuses, and some of them you know, might just have two or three set piece set bonuses possible, or some of them have, I think, up to four. I don't know if they go beyond that. I think some of them might even go up to five pieces. In any event, like I said, go onto the wiki and look at the list of filigrees and see what sets you might be interested in. And I'll put a link in the video description to that page uh, in the wiki. And these filigrees, by the way, they basically will drop from any legendary chest in Ravenloft. And they're pretty common. I mean, it seems like, you know, all, practically every chest you open, a, a filigree drops out of. You know, there are some that are more rare than others, uh, but, you know, you're going to get a bunch of them. I mean, I probably have hundreds of them in, in my bank. And they can go into the shared crafting storage, by the way. Not just your shared bank, but the crafting storage. So it's a good place to keep them out of the way. Unfortunately, they don't stack. So, you know, after a while, they are going to start chewing up a lot of space. I wish they would make them stack there, but right now they're not okay so I'm not gonna spend any more time leveling this one up but uh, you know let's say you know oh, you know I, I decided you know I want I don't want these ones in my epic Sirocco you know I wanted these other ones instead so what do you do well there are two things that you can do one you can get these sentient toolkits and these these are rare drops in in chess out in Ravenloft um, but you can also get these from the DDO store. You can get 10 for, like, I think 245 points, or it's, you can buy one, five, or 10 stacks. They're pretty cheap. So a 10, 10 is the best deal. So I'd recommend buying a 10 stack uh, if you're going to get into these sentient weapons. Like I said, it's just 245 points for 10, I think. A lot more, uh, it's a lot more of a bargain to get 10 than it is to get one or five. Okay, so you can get... Uh, the sentient toolkits and you can use those to pull the filigrees out okay uh, and I also wanted to mention that if you know if you double click it and this is something that can be a little bit confusing like nothing happens same with like the the gem 
and you can see it says minimum level 20 okay so you you know if you for whatever like if you you had a sentient jewel and you were lower than level 20 UTR or something like that and you went to use it you might think you don't double click it and it's gonna say oh you can't use this but that's not how you use the gem like I showed you you just drag it over there and you don't have to be level 20 just to drag it over and pop it into your into your weapon all right so same thing with the toolkit you, you don't click on it like you would the you know the the augment toolkits or whatever you just drag it over to the filigree and it pops it out boom and it just used up one of my toolkits okay uh, but since those are rare drops or they cost uh, money if you don't have you know the points then I want to show you that uh, you can let's see where's the general vendor they're gonna be some of the general vendors in the game not all of them but and, and not even just the ones in Ravenloft are gonna have these like these kits or these destroyer things maybe they have them here no nope. I'm gonna go let's see oh merchant right there derp <laughs> sentience destroyers okay and you can use them to just pull it rock over here and you can use those to just destroy it outright so if you don't have a toolkit or you know you can't afford a toolkit or whatever and you don't mind destroying your your thing outright you just drag it over there and boom it's gone so that's another way that you can get rid of a filigree in your weapon and so you can you can put other ones in there if you wanted to uh, I wanted to show you that each of the filigrees has sort of like a regular version and a rare version. So I think I have these, yeah, Electrocution MRR. So you can see this one says Electrocution MRR, and this one says Electrocution MRR Rare. Okay, and the rare is, it says plus two physical resistance rating. And the rare versions of the filigrees will always have the same properties. So different filigrees might have different rare properties to it but the electrocution MRR rare will always be that plus two PRR so it's not like you know rare versions of the electrocution MRR could have a variety of different things like I said the electrocution MRR the rare version of it will always be that plus two PRR and as far as I've seen it seems like all the rare versions are just like PRR MRR but I'm not, I'm not positive, but that's, if it's not always the case, it's definitely commonly the case that, you know, most of the, most of them that I've seen, uh, it's MRR or PRR. Okay, what next? Well, what if you're like, I don't want to use my freaking Epic Sirocco as my sentient weapon anymore, but I, you know, I, I level it up all the way, and, you know, what do I do? Is the gem wasted? No, you can just pop the gem right out. Look at this, you just drag your toolkit over there boom pulls the gem right out and then you know you could be like oh, I wanted to use my Celestia instead you know check me out so then you just pop it over here you into your Celestia and then it retains all the XP that it had right what if you're like this freaking kobold gem is so damn stupid and I'm tired of listening to its voice I want to do a different one <laughs> well then what do you do well you have an option there too check this out you can pull the gem out right so there I got my gem and it says right there you can, even when it's not in the weapon it tells you how much XP it has right so what you can do let's say you're just totally done with this sentient jewel you just don't want it well guess what I'm gonna put the furious in here which I haven't heard yet so let's see Our legend grows. okay so it's it's a dwarf it's a dwarf it's a dwarf voice so what you can do is you can actually feed a sentient jewel to another sentient jewel just by dragging it over here and so you can see this one had 2040 XP yes, boom that's it. My appetite and it jumped up to grows. 2090 so I guess oh that's because the actual jewel itself was minimum level 20 so I guess it was whatever in the event you can t you can take this you know, you're, you can feed one jewel to another so an important point here is let's say you get to a point where like you know you've got you know your sentient jewels and your sentient weapons maxed out on, on all your tunes 
and you just feel like you're sort of done, well, you can have another sentient jewel on the side where you can just keep feeding stuff to it to sort of bank sentient XP. So if they ever come out with, you know, an eighth or ninth slot or something like that on these weapons, you can have some XP stored away. Just mentioning you, I have the option. I know some people, I've heard some people doing that. But whether or not you want to do that, that's up to you. But uh, it's just one, you know, one way you could use an extra jewel is just use it to sock away some sentient XP. Okay, like I said, you can open up up to seven sentient slots, and you can have multiple set bonuses going. Uh, you know, there are a bunch of two-piece sets, so you, you know, you could have like three two-piece sets and then a, a seventh one, or you could have a, a three-piece set and a four-piece set, or a five-piece set and a two-piece set, or whatever. Uh, I also want to show you, or you know, make sure that you realize that uh, that stat bonuses that you're getting from them will stack, not with the same type. So, in fact, you can't even slot up the same thing twice. So, this is embraced by light wisdom, and embraced by light wisdom rare. So, I'm just going to show you, like, I'm going to pop the they rare one in there, great team. and then you can't even put another one of the same type, even if it's not the rare version. But I do want to show you that, like, this one is giving wisdom. And because it's a rare, it's also giving me plus two MRR. You can take, like, a, a wisdom, a point of wisdom from another set. Do I have that? Maybe I don't. Okay, let's get rid of that. Pull that out. Pull up the character sheet here. But I do have multiple constitutions here. Okay, there's a con. And there's a con. Okay, so let's, you could just take, you know, seven different ones that all gave constitution, for example, to get seven points of constitution. As long as, long as it's from a different set, it, they will stack. So there's the a point of constitution from the Enlightened Step set, and then here's a point of constitution from the, the Wreath of Flame set. We make a great team. So uh, that's the Celestia, and I'll just equip that, and you should see my con go up by two, which it did, from 72 to 74. So that was a question that you know I've seen people ask over and over and over. You know, will stat points from different sets stack? Yes, they will, as long as they're from different sets. But you know, if you do, but remember, if you do that, if you start like, oh, I want to get seven points of con, or you know, seven points of intelligence, or whatever, you're foregoing set bonuses you know if you put a bunch of filigrees in there from different sets but you know maybe you don't care about the set bonuses there are some really cool ones though so you know i can't emphasize enough take a look at that article from the wiki and you know see which which sets you want to work towards and and don't stress out about you know what am i going to do until i get there you know you can just sort of put junk filigrees that just have a you know somewhat of a helpful bonus to you and if it's a filigree you don't really care about you can just buy those those destroyers from the vendors and you know just destroy them or if you had a bunch of sentient toolkits you could pull it out but if it's if it's not a very good filigree you know we probably just want to probably just want to destroy it okay so we talked about where to get sentient jewels talked about leveling them up slotting filigrees unslotting filigrees unslotting gems and here's an example of, of my sentient weapon that I have on Voodoo. I don't even really use this thing. I thought I was going to use it, but then I decided, you know, don't really want to. But uh, you can see that I have a... So there's a, a five-piece set. Let's pull it over here. So we get a better look at that. So here's an example of a five-piece set, the, the Twilight's Cloak. Uh, you can see in the description there the, when you have five pieces, five filigrees from this set equipped, the Twilight's Cloak set, I get plus five displacement that stacks with the sources. And you also get all those other bonuses. So I'm getting the two, three, four, and five piece set. So plus two reflex save, plus five MRR, plus one dodge and maximum dodge, plus five displacement. And then in addition to those set bonuses that I'm getting, I'm also benefiting from each one of the filigrees individually as well. So, uh, so like this one, this is the rare dodge. So I'm getting plus one dodge and plus two PRR from that one. 
I'm reading off the top there of the description. This one is the Twilight's Club Dexterity one, so I'm getting a point of Dexterity and plus two PRR because it's the rare version. Here I'm getting a point of Charisma and plus two MRR because it's the rare version. Here I'm getting a point uh, two plus two Reflex saving throws, and those are as far as like I said, untyped, so they are stacking. That's plus two stacking Reflex saving throws, and then there's an additional plus two MRR because it's the rare version. Then I have the in, plus one intelligence. That's that's not the rare version, so there's nothing beyond the plus one intelligence there. And then I have the two piece purity set here. This is giving me a point of constitution. It's the rare, so that's two PRR on top of that. And then the healing amplification is ten heal amp, and then it's the rare version, so it's plus two MRR on top of that. And then you can see at the bottom the two piece set bonuses gives me an additional five healing amplification. So there's an example of a fully um, a fully slotted sentient weapon and you know like I said I'm not really keen on this right now so if I wanted to you know I could just pull that sentient gem out <laughs> I'm glad I did this because this is something I wanted to mention uh, that I forgot up until just now that if you want to pull a sentient jewel out you have to ha pull out all of your filigrees I'm gonna have to go buy some some destroyers here because I only have seven of these things left. Oops, I already had that up. So we'll just I'll destroy a couple of them and then I'll pull the rest of the filigrees out. Oops. Yeah, just drag it over there, it pops it right out. And now I can use the toolkit to pull my sentient jewel out. You know, and then if I was like, oh, I, I really want that on my epic Sirocco, right? So you just drag the Sirocco over here. And there's my maxed out sentient jewel of the hopeful. Pop it in there. <laughs> and then you can see it's, it's, it's maxed out still on the new weapon. All my all my filigree slots are available now, and I can just start popping my filigrees back in there. All right, I think that's everything I want to go over. I hope that you found this informative and helpful. And if you have any questions about my videos, you can respond on YouTube.